1 Samuel 15, 25. So David and the elders of Israel, people in charge, the spokesmen, the, the ones of authority, those who have lived, and the captains over thousands, military, went to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of the house of Obadiah. That's where we left it in chapter 13, when Uzzah put his hand to it and he was struck down and they moved it off to Obadiah's house. With joy. With joy. They didn't do this. Oh, 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 have to do it. Oh. That would have been acceptable to God. And it came to pass when God helped the Levites that bear the ark. That's interesting. How did God help them? What, what couldn't you imagine God did? I mean, make it lighter? Uh, gave them an extra light step? Didn't kill them? <laughs> it's just weird. I, I mean, what could you... I mean, just, just relish on 26 and God helped the Levites. That bear the ark of the covenant, so that would be uh, Kohath. They're the ones that would bear that ark. Now, in Numbers have said, I think it's Numbers 2, 1 or 2, they came up and they brought these wagons and oxen. They gave them to Moses. Moses gave them to the Morarites. And he gave them to, um, I forget the other name there. But Kohath got none. Because he said, the ark and all the instruments to be upon their shoulders. And here they're finally taking that ark and it's the staves are on the sh shoulders of these men. And the Bible says God helped them. It's a long walk. That they offered seven bullocks and seven rams. So they're offering sacrifices as they're going. And David was clothed with a robe of fine linen. Fine linen in the book of Revelation is righteousness of the saints. When we're going through the judgment seat of Christ, that is what we're going to wear. And I believe those, when they go through the great white throne judgment and they had their name in the Lamb's Book of Life, I, can't, I believe that's what they're going to wear too. Fine linen. And all the Levites that bear the ark will be Kohath. And the singers. So you got the ark and you got singers. And Chenaniah, the master of the song, with the singer. So here's this one man. He's in charge. He's the master. I mean, there is no David. Yes, we're going to have a song for the Lord tonight. When have you practiced? Practice? Oh, we just felt it in our heart to, to sing tonight. No. You would have to be practiced. You would have to have someone in charge. You would have to have someone guiding you. Because David thought, as far as the service to the Lord, this singing and praises, it had to be perfect. David also had upon him an ephod of linen. So that's one of the priestly garments. Exodus 28, verses 4 and 5. 1 Samuel 2, 18 and Leviticus 8, 7. David later on, no, David has already, excuse me, David's already had the old showbread, him and his troops. He didn't have the fresh showbread on the Sabbath day, but on the Sabbath day when they're taking it off the table, he meets the priest and he says, hey, I need some of that, and they give it to him. And it's almost like when you read that where they it looks like they are in the holy place. John the Baptist's father freaked out when he seen Gabriel. No one belongs here but Levites. David's of Judah. Thus all Israel brought up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord with shouting. Glory to God. There is a shouting to God. Not This is not a show. Look at me. It is victory. Here comes the Ark of God. It's going to sit. In a place where God will have it to sit until that ark is built. I mean, to the temple is built. With the sound of the coronet. That's the first time that shows up, that coronet. The, 
and with trumpets, with cymbals, making a noise with psalteries and harps. The Bible says, make a joyful noise in the Lord. So that's, that's just not, you know, a, a bang your head rock concert. It's loud. And the imitation you get today is when you get cars going down the road. You get your neighbors down the street. That's a noise. And it came to pass, as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, Jerusalem, Zion, we already read that, that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looking out a window, saw King David dancing and playing. I don't think he's playing like a child. Oh, let the children play up in the, in the, you see it's in the Bible. That's not the kind of playing. He's probably playing an instrument. Remember, he played one before King Saul. David was a musician. She despised him in her heart. You know, when Jesus Christ comes to settle down on the seat of David, when he comes in the second advent, there are going to be people who are going to despise him in their hearts. We don't want that, God. They would have the Antichrist to reign. So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent. David made a tent for it. Not a building, a tent. That David had pitched for it. And they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before the Lord. That would be Leviticus 7, 11 through 37. And when David had made an end of offering the burnt offering and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Yeah, there's this joy. There's greatness. And he dwelt to every one of Israel, both man and women, no in between, you're either male or female, to every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flag and a wine. Well, look at that. There's the bread and wine. Take you this. This is my flesh. Eat it of you. Take this, take this wine. I will no longer drink it with you, but when we drink it new in a new king. There, there, look at that. Why is there bread and wine? Why is the word flesh shows up? Well, guess who's going to be serving bread and wine in the millennium? Jesus Christ in the flesh, the resurrected flesh. Look at his hands when he gives you the bread. The holes are going to be there. It's going to remind those, those apostles that last night they spent with Jesus in the upper room. 2 Samuel 6. 2 Samuel 6. Repeat it. 2 Samuel 6, verse 1. 2 Samuel 6, 1. We're going to go back to chapter 13 of Chronicles. Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. And David arose and went went with all the people that were with him from Bailey of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubim, the mercy seat. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart. Uh-oh. And brought it out of the house of Benadab that was in Gibeah. And other in Ohio and the sons of Abinadab dragged the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was in Gibeah, occupying, that's the only time that word shows up, the ark of God. And Ohio went before the ark. The Philistines, when they did it, they said, here, let God direct the oxen. There was no men. The Philistines stood up and they watched it. So David has added men to guide it. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fur. That's the first time that word shows up. Wood. Of harps. First time that word shows up. On sultries. The first time that word shows up. On trimbles, the first time that word shows up. On coronets. When we saw coronets, 
Because I got marked the first time. That might be the only two places in the, in the Bible. The other one was coronet. Coronet, okay. One's coronet, one's coronets. And on symbols, that's the first time that word shows up. And they came to Nacon's or Nacon's threshing floor. Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it. Grabbed the ark of the Lord. For the oxen shook it. That's the first time that word shows up. Shook. And the air of the Lord was, I mean, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error. First time that word shows up. And there he died by the ark of God. Boom. I don't know if he was a pile of ashes or he was a dead body, but there he is. That's like an Ahab and Abihu. They died before the Lord in the holy place when they offered their own incense. And David was displeased because of the Lord. Remember, David's mad at God. And made a breach upon Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Para Uzzah. Para means breach. Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? Now look at it. There's how we learn where David gets the idea. David's like, all right, here's a dead man. What do I do? And David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David, Jerusalem. But David carried it aside to the house of Obadiah the Giddite. Now it's funny that God allowed them to move that ark again when they just had a man die. And it's kind of funny, the people that touched that ark, that put it on the cart, because it said they sent it up on a new cart. God allowed them to touch it, to move it. God allowed them to do it wrong. But when one man lost faith in God and touched it, he's dead. So don't go praying to God, oh God, stop me from doing wrong, because he didn't, and he won't. And the ark of God continued in the house of Obadiah, the Giddite, three months. That's how long it took David to get right, smart. Three months. And Lord bless Obadiah and all his household. And it was told King David, say, the Lord has blessed the house of Obadiah. And all that pertains unto him because of the ark of God. Hey, God. Hey, David, that man, man, he's just, woohoo, he's doing good. So David went and brought the brought up the ark of God out of the house of Obadiah into the city of David with gladness. <laughs> oh, can't have this no longer. Got to bring it to Jerusalem. And it was so that when they bare the ark of the Lord, had gone six paces, that's the only time that word shows up. He sacrificed fat I said, oxen and fatlings. And I believe over here it said oxen and back over here real quick. They offered buttocks and rams. So fatlings would be rams. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. That's the playing. That's the dancing. And David was girded with a linen ephod. There it is again. That's what the priest wore. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting. There it is again. And with the sound of the trumpet. Man, there is just great joy. Remember, they forsaken the ark during King Saul's reign. And King, uh, uh, David was on the run always. And as the ark of the Lord came in the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping, that's the first time that word showed up, and dancing. Did what? In chapter 15. So. 29, it says dancing and playing. Dancing and playing. He's leaping and dancing. So that leaping is playing. He's merry heart. He's light on the fleet. He's ready. Ho oh, ho. Oh. And he's not dancing with nobody. It's not a mixed dance. And she despised him in her heart. That's hatred. 
Because the Holy Spirit recorded that twice. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in his place. That's the most holy place that David prepared. In the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. We read it was a tent. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. That would be at the brazen altar. Now did David give the animals and the Levites did it? Or did David do the sacrifices? Read it. I'm going to leave it with a question. There's something about David. It looks like he's in the priesthood. It looks like he's a prophet, priest, and king. Jesus Christ is a prophet, priest, and king. Saul, I mean, not Sam, I'm gonna get that. Solomon was a king and prophet, but he was never a priest. Uzziah tried to usurp the priest's office, and he got leprosy. King Saul tried to. King Saul did the priestly functions, but he was never approved by God and died and went into hell. There's something amazing about David. And as soon as David had made the end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people with, even among the whole multitudes of Israel, like Jesus. Weren't there multitudes and all kinds of people around Jesus? As well as women as men, to everyone a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon, first time that word shows up, of wine. There's the wine and bread and a good piece of flesh. So all the people departed, everyone to his house. Jesus Christ is the only good one. Here's a measured out wine. He gave those he gave those disciples a measured amount of wine, whatever was in that cup. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David. How glorious was the king of Israel today, who has uncovered himself today. In the eyes of all the handmaids, of his servants, as one of the vain fellows, shamelessly, only time that word shows up, uncovers himself. Well, evidently that linen ephod was uh, not the underclothes, but pretty well much the underclothes, just over the overclothes. That she looks at him and says, David, you're naked. And Jesus Christ died on that cross naked for all the world to see and he was despised by everyone that was around him come on down if you God let's see if Elijah will come and see you think you're so good let's see God bring you down off that cross and David said to Michael here comes the prophet he Lori looks like a priest and he's definitely in a king in 2nd Samuel 6 he's a king He's a prophet, what we're going to see now, possibly a priest. But we know he's already eaten showbread. And David said to Michael, it was before the Lord. I did it for God. Which chose me before thy father. Oh, stick the knife in her, David. Where's your father, Michael? Where's his kingdom? Where's your brothers? And before all the house, his house, your father's house, before you, to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord. I'm king now, not your father. Over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than thus. And I will be base, I believe. Right, right, cover. That's the first time that word shows up. I will be base in my own sight. I will do whatever I need to do to serve the Lord. Now, if you want a modern church verse to say, I can do all wicked things for the Lord, that, that would be it right there. But again, 
I've been told sarcasm, which I am, is a sin. David's using it. Paul had, was sarcastic. Jesus was sarcastic. One guy comes up to me, go, you know, I'll follow you everywhere. Listen, the birds in the air have have homes. You know? You vile, you wicked, you whatever you call those Pharisees. And of the maidservants, which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. They know I'm doing it for, for the Lord. They know I love the Lord. Therefore, Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. She became barren, no children after that. That, was, that barrenness is the anger of God. The house of Bimelech, when they took Sarai, man, the, the women were barren until he made it right with Abraham. Uh, there was another one in the Bible where he made them, he made them, I mean, not born barren like Sarah, Rebecca and all that, but he made them barren. Rachel, she was yeah, Rachel, because she had the envy of her sister. And there was another group of people that, you know, that was it. They were to have no children. So we see the heir of David. We see David getting right. And we see David doing it right. And just because you sin, get right with the Lord. Repent with the, with the Lord. Do it right by the Lord. And God is able to use you. I mean, David's the one that committed murder and committed adultery. And God still used him. Solomon, a thousand wives. And we have the book of Proverbs. We have the book of uh, Ecclesiastes. We have Song of Song, books written by Solomon himself. Glory to God. Excitement. I feel when the Lord Jesus Christ comes for the rapture, I think a lot of Christians are going to be upset. Especially if it's a big game or a big event coming up.